says, and God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He says, you shall have no other gods before me. Commandment number one. Number two is found in verse 4. The Bible says, You shall not make for yourself any idol in the form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. That is commandment number two. Jump down to verse 7. The Bible says, You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Commandment number three. We talked about how to misuse the name, but also how to use the name because the name of Jesus is powerful, right? Number four, let's look at it together, found in verse 8. The Bible says in verse 8, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. That's commandment number four. And don't forget that we don't worship on the Sabbath anymore. That's Old Testament. That's for the Jew. No, for the Israelite, we worship on the Lord's day. We talked about that last week. We worship on God's big day, which is Sunday. What's the day? Don't make me sing again. And then today, today we're going to be looking at verse 12. Look at it with me. All the kids and teenagers are loving this one right here. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you we better pray one more time father in heaven thank you for your word i pray lord that this will not just be instructional but it'll be inspirational and father that we can leave this place thanking you for our parents and what they mean to us god let us learn what it means to honor them today in christ's name we pray amen i want to speak to you on the subject of something i never was an honor student how many of you walked the line when you graduated with one of those gold uh, tassel things? Come on. All the smart people. How many of you wish you had one? How many of you didn't care whether you're just glad you graduated? Come on, amen. Me too. All right, so we're going to talk about honor student today. And uh, I-, I want us to bring out this fifth commandment where he says, You shall honor your mom and your dad. Now, this commandment really in the Ten Commandments is the turning point. You say, what do you mean? Well... There's really the Ten Commandments come in two different sections. The first section deals with our relationship with God. Remember what he said? He said, this is who you're to worship. Two and three is how you're to worship. And then number four is when you should worship. And so the first section of the Ten Commandments is basically, watch this, it's vertical. It's between you and I and God. But when we get to commandment number five, there's a shift that takes place. You see, the last section, uh, commandment 5 through 10, deal with our relationship with man. So we move from the relationship with God, the vertical relationship, now we're at the horizontal relationship. By the way, you can never have the horizontal relationships right until, first of all, the vertical relationship is right. Somebody better say amen. That's some good preaching right there. Amen. Is this my amen corner? (laughs) From now on, right? This is it. Then say amen. Amen. Right. So if you have your vertical relationship with God right, then a horizontal relationship with man can be right. You see, we can't be right with man until we're right with God. The relationship with man starts with the father and the mother because if you can't respect and love your parents your father and your mother, how will you love and respect a stranger? We can't be right in society until we're right at home. I want you to listen really carefully. When the home decays, the church decays. And when the church, this is prophetic right here, guys. We're seeing it happen in our country right now. When the home decays, watch this, the church decays, and when the church decays, The nation decays. What does the word honor mean? Write this down. Remember that the Old Testament was written in the original language in Hebrew. Everybody say Hebrew. How many know Hebrew? All right. The New Testament was written primarily in Greek. How many know Greek? Y'all don't know. Anybody know English? 
kind of, sort of, right? And so the Hebrew word, this word honor, the Hebrew word means literally to attach weight to. To attach weight to. This means that we are to pay close attention to our parents, to give them significance. We have to look upon them as weighty people worthy of our consideration. And all the parents said, we don't need to be like that little boy who was out playing and his mama called him. She called him once. She called him twice. She called him three times. And his friend looked and said, you better, you better go in. Your mother is calling you. And he said, I don't have to yet. She's only called three times. When, I, when my kids were, were small, I don't know. Have anybody ever heard of the phrase first-time obedience? When I, was, um, when I was a young parent and my kids were young, I told Tammy I'd heard this and I'd read about this. Maybe I picked it up from my, my student pastor, Bobby Mullins, that I talk about every now and then here. But he practiced first-time obedience. And what that was was I wanted to tell my kids to do something one time. I didn't want to count down from ten. Ten! Nine, and you get down to one, and you start over again, you know, another kid. No, I wanted to, when I said something, I wanted them to obey. Not because I'm some drill sergeant, but because I want to protect them. I mean, think about it with me, if you will. If your kid is three years of age, and they're out next to and they're getting ready to go out into the highway, I want to be able to say to my son, Austin or Madison, stop, and they stop. Now wait for me to say stop three or four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. Can I get an amen? And so we need to understand what it means. And young people, we, you need to understand what it means to honor mom and dad. So I want to give you t two things. Now the first one is God's command for children. God's command for children. I know you're looking at your listening guide, and I hope you picked one up when you came in. I know you're looking at that and you think, we're going to be here till supper. No, not, not really. We're going to run through these things really quick. I want you to see what God's command for children really is as we walk down through this passage of Scripture. Number one, we honor our parents by obedience. Everybody say obedience. obedience. Honor by obedience. Colossians 3 and verse 20, the Bible says, obey, Children, obey your parents for this is right. And you're, you're not doing this just to please mom and dad by the way young people listen to me when you obey your parents you're not doing that just to please mom and dad you're doing it to please god because it's his commandment and so we show we honor our parents by being obedient to them god says when you obey your parents you live long we are successful and we are prosperous out in the rocky mountains anybody ever been to the rockies before somebody raise your hand for something today amen You've been to the Rockies. In the Rockies, there is what we call the highest peak. It's called the Continental Divide or the Great Divide. And I want you to think about that. It's the highest peak of the mountain there. And if a, a, a drop of water falls on the Continental Divide, it'll go down one way or it'll go down the other. Now, follow what I'm saying here. If the drop of water, now watch this. If the drop of water goes on one side of the divide, it will flow downward into the Pacific Ocean. If it falls on the other side and it flows down the other side, it'll go downward through the Mississippi Valley and out the Miss, into the Mississippi River and down to the Gulf of Mexico until finally out into the Atlantic Ocean. Am I right with that? So think about that for just a moment. Think about that. Both seems to start so nearly nearby in the same place, but they end up oceans apart. They, end, they start at the same place, but they end up oceans apart. What does that have to do with parenting? And so it is with children. Some seem to have the same background, the same opportunities, the same genes, the same chromosomes, the same abilities, yet they end up miles apart. What's the key? The key thing that makes some turn out so well and others turn out so poorly is that the ones that have turned out well have learned, watch this, to honor their fathers and their mothers. Honor. Honor. D.L. Moody, that great preacher of yesteryear, said this. Mr. Moody said, no, one, no man or woman who dishonors father or mother ever prospers. How true that might be. Honor by obedience. Disobedience is wickedness. 
The Bible says that disobedience is a sin against God. Now, I want you real quick, go to Romans chapter 1 with me. If you got a copy of God's Word, turn there. We'll, I want you to see this. Romans 1, if you don't have a copy, just uh, look over somebody else or listen really carefully. Romans chapter 1 and verse 28. Romans 1, 28, the Bible says there, Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. Now watch this. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, Malice, they're gossips, they're slanderers, they're God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. Oh my goodness, look what they put, he put right here, right next to all that bad stuff. They disobey their parents. Wow. Wow. What is he saying in that passage? He's simply saying that being disobedient to your mom and your dad is a sin against the holy God. Disobedience to parents is not a light sin. It's a dark sin. It's a hellish sin. It's also a sign of the second coming, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. So quickly, I said we're going to run through. That's the longest one. Let's run through these others fast. Honor, number two, by helping and caring. Oh, don't you love this one? Some young people think today that if they are made to get a job or to work, that it's un-American. Un-American. A young lady came to her father. You know, she was hip, she was dope, she was whatever. You know, she had it all together. And she came to her dad and she said, Hey, Dad, can I have some money to hit the flick? Anybody understand that? <laughs> hey, Dad, can I have some money to hit the flick? And he looked back at her and and uh, she want, basically, she wanted some money to go to the movies, you know. He looked back at some of y'all, just, you, know, you just now got it, right? And she, he looked back and he said, no, you can't have any money to hit the flick, but you can swish the dish and spread the bed and flop the mop. <laughs> the Bible says the son that sleeps in harvest is ashamed to his father. If there is work to be done and you don't help, you're shaming your parents. If your bedroom looks like a nuclear bomb had gone off or it looks like the city dump, then clean it up. Can I get an amen by the moms in the house? Also, we should take care of our parents when they are older. A real problem in the, on the rise in the United States of America is we have sweet older people and nobody's there to take care of them. The Bible teaches for Christians that it is our responsibility to take care of mom and dad. That's our responsibility. They gave us support. When we were younger, then we need to give back to them. Honor by helping them, taking care of them. And then honor by showing respect. Leviticus 19.3, Proverbs 30 and verse 17. Of course, parents should live in such a way to earn respect from their children as well. A little boy was at a zoo on one occasion, and they were looking at some little kittens. And he asked his mom, Mom, what kind of animals are these? And she said, son, they're little wildcats. And he said, why are they little wildcats? And she said, obviously because their mom and dad are little wildcats. You know that old saying, don't do as I do, do as I say. Amen, corner. Amen. Say, oh me. Scared him to death, didn't he? <laughs> don't do as I do, do as I say. It doesn't work. Our kids... Follow in our example. They do what we do. Whether or not you think your mom or your dad are worthy of respect, the Bible still says respect them. Honor by expressing thanksgiving. Honor by expressing thanksgiving. If you develop the attitude of gratitude, your parents have done many things for you. You need to be thankful to them. Shakespeare said, how sharper than a serpent's tooth is to have a child that is thankless. And then number next, honor by, whatever next is, honor by heeding counsel. Proverbs 1, 8 and 9. Heed their counsel. <laughs> I know that when you get about 16 years of age, you suspect that your parents have room to rent upstairs, unfurnished, you know. Right? 
You get 19 and you feel like that you've passed them by in all knowledge. Now some of, us, some of them have, you know, and I know you girls are in college and you got, like, you were studying the other night for, like, chemistry tests and all this stuff, and it's like, that's Greek to me, you know, sister. <laughs> but understand, I'm talking about real life stuff. We get 19 and we think we've passed them by way. At 22, your parents are out of it altogether. And then when you get a little bit older, you realize that they were right about so many things after all. The older you get, the smarter your parents will get. You say, well, they don't know calculus and physics. Who cares? I always get in trouble by the teachers when I say that. They do know life because they've lived it. Honor them by living an honorable life next. Honor them by living an honorable life. You are an extension of your parents. You're an extension of your parents. When you do well in your grades and at school and your life, that honors, that brings honor to your parents. Live in such a way that it never disgraces them. And then honor by loving them. Honor by love. We owe love. They gave us life. We owe love. You need to express that love to your parents. Man, I've talked to so many people that it was, just, and you have too, and you've heard people say, if I could only talk to mom one more time. If I could only sit down and drink some coffee with my dad one more time. If I could only go hunting with my pops one more time. If I could only go shopping with my mom just one more time. Time flies, doesn't it? Hey, sit down and write that letter. Do that chore. Send those flowers. Give that hug. Say, I love you. And then catch them when they pass out. Right? Love them. Love them. And then I want to say one thing, because this is going to hit a lot of people really where you are. The next is honor by forgiving them. Because some of you up to this point, this is what you've been thinking. This is what you've been thinking in your mind. I know you have. I know many of you have. You don't know my mom and dad. My mom and dad are sorry. They've raised me sorry. They didn't raise me to love God. They put me through all kind of junk that parents shouldn't kid put their kids through. They smoked and they, 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 they smoked their pot. They drank their booze. They were never sober. They never brought me to church. Now, if I were to ask some of you, if that's you, lift your hand. Many of you probably would raise your hand. But here's the deal. If that's the case... You know what you need to do to go on with your life? Forgive them. Because as long as you hold a grudge against your parents, you're bound up. You need to forgive them. By the way, we ain't perfect either. We screw up too. We're, look, you, look, if you're going to be a parent, I promise you, some of you are not parents yet, some of you are already parents, guess what? We make mistakes. <laughs> we make mistakes, kids. Kids, we make mistakes. But guess what? So will you. It's not what you did. It's not what parents, it's where they're headed now. Where they're headed now. Forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. Some of you, some of you kids, you need to forgive your parents. Some of you grown kids, you need to forgive your mom and your dad. Most of them know what they did to you. Most of them know what they put you through. And they have regret. But aren't you glad <laughs> that when we sinned, Christ didn't hold it against us? Honor them by forgiving them. And then God's priorities for parents, real quick. God's priorities for parents. Number one, dedicate your children. Dedicate your children. We're going to have some baby dedications from time to time here. And a lot of times it'll be around Mother's Day or different days like that. Dedicate your children. But I'm not talking about in a church service necessarily. I'm talking about dedicate your children to, to the Lord when they are infants. I, I, have any of you been keeping up? Has anybody like watch NFL football? Anybody watch football besides me? All right. I guess you, you have to have your head in the sand. Even 
people like my wife who cannot stand football, right? But you've, got a, you've heard about Ray Rice. You've heard about all these athletes now that are being arrested for abuse and uh, child abuse. Adrian Peterson, man, you know, all these guys that are being arrested now. And I've been watching and listening to all the commentary and, and, and some of these guys, I've heard it more than one occasion, probably on five different occasions, especially on NFL Insiders on ESPN, God's channel. And uh, they, they sit around a table and, and they're talking about where did this come from? When did this begin? And, and one or two, how you know Bill Polian, I think, the guy, old guy for the coach years ago, general manager, he would say, well, you know, and I love that guy. He's smart and great. But he said, you know, it, it goes back to 12 years of age. No, it doesn't. It goes back to birth. The Bible says train up a, ch not a teenager, train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old he will not depart from it. We, we listen, as adults we better dedicate our children to the Lord, listen, before they're born. Y'all remember the, when your wife, guys, was laying on her side and her belly's out to here. Come on, can I get an amen? And she'll holler at you and you run in there. And, Come here, quick, quick, quick. Little Austin, little Madison, rolling, kicking. <laughs> Come here, fill, fill them, fill them. And you walk in there, you know, and your baby's just moving around and kicking and drop kicking and high-fiving and having a big time. Listen, I think you ought to dedicate your child to the Lord before they are ever born. Dedicate them. Dedicate. Everybody say dedicate them. Dedicate your children. Dedicate your children to the Lord when they're infants. Pray over your child daily. Ask God's favor to be upon them. Raise them in God's house under spiritual influence of prayer and the preaching of the Word of God. It's important. It's important to raise your children in church. Dedicate your home to Jesus. Make it a place of worship. Make it a place of safety. Is your house that place where everybody wants to come and hang out? Dedicate your children. Number two, direct your children. Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child. Train means to build into or to bring under control. Now get these statistics. 16% of influence over your child comes from the children. Only 16%. But that's important. 31% of influence over your child comes from peers. 53% of influence over your child comes from the home. Folks, we better take advantage of the time that God has given us. Daddy, sometimes we got to get out of the recliner and put the Diet Coke down or whatever you're drinking and watching TV and put the remote down, put the social media down and spend some quality time with the kiddos. Children need to be trained by their parents. Listen, friend. Hillary Clinton years ago came out and said, it takes a village. No, it doesn't. It takes mom and dad. Yeah, everybody. Listen, we've got a part in your children and preaching and teaching to your children. And, 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 and school has a part. But whose responsibility? Listen, it's not the politician's responsibility to raise my kids. It's not the government's responsibility to train my kids. It's my responsibility to train my kids in the things of God. Direct them, direct them, direct. Children need to be trained by their parents. Train them to work. <laughs> work develops character. Never work, uh, never let work take precedence over church. But teach them to work. Teach them to work. When we say you can work, but, you know... Take that shift, you know, when you, when you can't go to church. I don't think that's good. Train them to work, but don't let it take precedent over church. Direct them to be honest. Teach them that they will, when they lie, that they're being more like the devil than any other time. Because Satan is the father of lies. Direct them to be, to be modest. I remember one time. Now, we can become very legalistic when it comes to this. I, uh, and we're not going to do that. Now, you say, well, what should a person wear? I'm not going to tell you. That's between... And God and your parents, but uh, I remember one time I was pastoring a, a little Baptist church outside of Henderson, Tennessee, and I remember we had a deacons meeting. Glorious, wonderful deacons meetings. Oh, me. Yeah. You got to know when to say amen or oh, me, okay? 
So we just have this thing. And the first thing on the agenda, there's this guy, this deacon, and he starts pounding the table. I'm like, man, I'm 21 years old. Pounding. No, I'm 26. Pounding the table. Preacher. Preacher. You better start preaching against wearing shorts to church. Back in the day, y'all remember the girls wore the I don't know what you call them, long culotte looking things. What are they called? Long shorts that came past the knee? Gaucho something, groucho, gaucho culotte something. I mean, man, they were extremely modest, but a little bit of leg was showing down here. And I looked back at him and said, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to preach modesty, but I'm not going to tell the girls they can't wear shorts that cover more than most of everything else covers. My wife kind of has this thing. I hear the girls always talking, you know. And by the way, I think it's great and I think it's wonderful to be in style. There's nothing wrong with being in style. Uh, you know, some people think modesty is wearing a, you know, like a humongous robe. It's five sizes too big. No, I'm not talking about that. My wife always says, no tight on tight. You can wear something fitted, wear the other piece loose. I don't know. What am I? I don't know what I'm talking about. Just be modest. Just be modest. Be modest. Direct your children to be modest. We're not going to get legalistic. Just be modest. And then number three, disciple, uh, discipline your children. Proverbs 22, 15. How do we discipline our kids? By leading them. Set an example. Live so your children see Jesus in you. Listen, I, I, I always... In, Look, I've pastored, uh, I don't know, four or five churches. I don't know how many, how many I have to count, count them up. But I've had parents come to me on multiple occasions, like you can imagine. And they'll say, Pastor Ronnie, Pastor Ronnie, little, little Garfunkel over here, he's asking a whole lot of questions about being saved, and about being baptized, and, and, and he wants to talk, talk to you. Would you talk to him about being saved and how to be saved? I, I'll say, yes, yes, ma'am. I'd be glad to, but what I'm thinking in my mind is, why don't you? All I'm saying is, Mom and Dad, there's no greater thing in all the world than to lead your own children to Christ. Wow, lead them, lead them to Christ. And then number two, limit them. Lead them and limit them. Set rules and boundaries and stick to them. Learn to say, no, 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 no. Can you say no? Say, everybody say no. See, you can say it. Learn to say no. Learn to say no. It's okay. Our kids, they may not believe this. They may not acknowledge this. But our children do want boundaries. If you were playing a ball game, there's no boundaries. It wouldn't be fun to play. You could just run forever. No out of bounds. That's no fun, right? Boundaries. Our kids want boundaries. Set rules. Learn to say no. No game is fun. If the boundaries aren't set, kids want boundaries. When they go outside the boundaries, then be consistent in our leader, in our dis uh, discipline. We need to pat them on the back high when they do good. By the way, we don't do this enough. We get mad at them, we ground them, we discipline them, we spank them, whatever you do. But oftentimes when they do good, you know what they want or looking for from mom and dad? That hug, that pat on the back. I knew you could do it. Great job. Great job. So follow me. Watch this. Pat them high on the back when they do good and lower when they don't do so good. When they're out of bounds, a little lower. And then love them. Love them. Listen, don't discipline in anger. Don't discipline in anger. I remember when I, <laughs> I don't know why, I had to spank Austin and discipline Austin more than Madison. She was just always so good. <laughs> Austin, you know. He'd try his daddy, you know, so often, but I'd always, not always, I'm not perfect, I, I messed up, but so, often I'd sit him down, and he'd almost repeat it. I know, Dad, you hate this worse than I do. <laughs> this is going to hurt, I know, Dad, this is going to hurt you worse than it hurts me. But it just hurts. But then when it's over, my kids didn't run from me when I disciplined them. They put their arms around me and hugged me because they knew I loved them. Discipline in love, not in 
anger. Tell them you love them. Madison, would you come up and begin to play something for me? You know, we're talking about honoring. We're talking about honoring mom and dad. But the greatest honor, in order for you to be able to, to honor your mother and father, I think it's important for you, first of all, to honor God. And if we honor God, and we get that vertical relationship with God where it needs to be, then it's always so much easier to honor others and respect others. If we get the vertical right, then the horizontal will follow the vertical. But the problem is, so many people disrespect their parents and disrespect others and don't honor them and respect them is because their relationship with God is not what it needs to be. And here's the deal today. And we close with this. How is your relationship with God? How is your relationship with God? Are you living for God? We'll back up even further. Do you know God? You see, you can't honor God until you have a relationship with God. And you have a relationship with God by turning your back on your sin and turning your life to Christ. Have you ever given Him your life? Have you ever said, Jesus, be Lord and Savior of my, of my life. I give it to you. I can't do this thing on my own. God, I got to have you. And then number two, if you're a child of God here and you already know Christ as Savior and you have a relationship with God, how is that relationship? I should say, how's that fellowship? See, nothing in this world can break the relationship. You know, Austin and Madison can get so upset with Daddy, and they've done it. They can get so mad at me, but no matter how mad they get at me or I get upset with them, I'm always going to be their Daddy. I just am. So our relationship is not broken, but our fellowship can be broken. Some of you here in the house today, your relationship with God, with God is there. You've asked Christ to save you, to be your Lord and Savior. You, you know where you are with Christ, but maybe the fellowship part of it's broken. Broken. Not where you once were. You're not honoring and respecting God and living for Him. I challenge you today. Do you need to get some things right with Him? You can do that today. You can spend some time with the Holy God today. And we invite you to do that. But then the third part of this invitation is simply this. It's kind of like homework. You want to, you well, you do some homework this week. Will you do it? Because I, I always want to give you something to take home with you. I think it's important for us not to just hear a message, but to hear something that we can take home with us, that we can apply to our life. Hey, young people, when's the last time you sat down and wrote your mom and dad a letter? I wish I had Tammy's phone. Austin sent us a text the other day. He said, Mom and Dad, I just want you to know, as I look back, I don't know where this came from. As I look back, I see absolutely nothing that I would have ever done different in raising us as kids. You were great parents. And then I told Tammy, I said, text him back, how much does he need to borrow? Man, I'm telling you, Tammy, you know what she did with that text? She saved it. Young person, not just young person. Maybe in your 20s or 30s or 40s and your mom and dad are still alive. When's the last time you sat down and wrote a letter? Snail mail. Send a text. Put something on social media about your parents, not just on Mother's Day. Or your dad. Or you picked up the phone better yet, as my father-in-law would say, just call me. And you just simply said, thank you. I love y'all. You say, well, my mom and dad were what you described earlier. I bet you if you look hard, you can find something you can say nice to your parents. They gave you life. You're here today because of your parents. You're here today. You owe them gratitude. Thanksgiving. So this week, I'm just going to challenge you. This is our challenge. A little bit different invitation. But I want to challenge you this week. Sometime this week. Maybe today. Don't procrastinate about it. Do it today. Maybe your mom and dad are here today. 
Maybe during this time of prayer and commitment that we have every Sunday, maybe you want to just go to your parents and just give them a big old hug and tell them you, you love them and you, you're thankful for them. This week, let them know by respecting them and honoring them. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes.